and welcome to Talk Time. My guest today is Ms. Lisa Mills, educator and conservationist who has done some remarkable work for the conservation of the Asian elephants. Lisa Mills, welcome to my show. Thank you for having me. You have been doing some great work for the conservation of the Asian elephants. You were working in the India-Bhutan region, which is closer to where we are sitting today, that is in Gohati. Uh, tell me some, uh, something. Uh, I mean, my question to you is, is the threat to the Asian elephant really so great because in the beginning of the 20th century some estimates say that there was 100,000 of them and now people say that it has been reduced to half. Well it, the numbers may be much lower than that actually at, at, from what I understand right now although it is challenging to get accurate counts. Yeah. Okay but I, I do believe there are threats the, the lack of habitat um, habitat is also being degraded, so even if it's not lost completely, mm -hmm. when you take everything out of the forest, it no longer can sustain elements that are an umbrella species. So there are a lot of problems, but I don't take a lot of credit myself. Really what I try to do is put together resources to support communities to go in directions they'd like to go to help with conservation. Mm -hmm. And my hope is that we can inspire a young generation to become conservationists um, at a very grassroots level. Sometimes we're effective, sometimes we're not. But my hope is that through my education work that will bring the, the best of science together yeah. with the best of what communities have to offer and will do something good for elephants. Now, now, how would you rate, because you are someone who is not just in your lab or in your university, you are someone who is actually out in the field. Uh, your elephant on the line project, which you are basically, uh, your playing field is the jungles of Bhutan and India. My question to you, Lisa, is, uh, you know, how serious is the threat? Is it really alarming? Well, I think it's what's alarming above all is that, to me, is that people tolerate the kind of human-elephant conflict levels that are going on. I think India is amazing this way. Um, there are so many people and elephants that actually get injured and yeah. die, and yet you know there are other countries where if this were happening those elephants would be gone tomorrow you know that the tolerance levels here, here are amazing so it's impressive to me mm -hmm. um, that part of the culture you know there's a long history of life with elephants there's spiritual connections yeah. with the elephant and of course the love of the land this is really clear to me that people here really cherish the land so as we seek development yeah. there are lots of co conflicts that come as a result of trying to get that lifestyle that humans desire and good things for your family can also be hard on the environment. So too many people, not enough resources, you know, to share with the elephants. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I mean I'm mean, i focusing on elephants, but that's not the only problem because we have leopards in the streets of Gohati, uh, not to speak of other places. Uh, I'll take you back to basically, you know, uh, what is the root cause basically is it just degradation alone or is it just deforestation or habitat loss is it only that or is it complete lack of awareness well from me, from my view you know there are so many facets to this it's, there's not a simple answer but ultimately we are in the habitat of wild animals there is no there's no way around the fact that these animals somehow are managing to survive even as we all take pieces of the environment around the yeah. This is a global mm -hmm. problem with many, many kinds of species. The neat part about elephants is being an umbrella species, but a little bit adaptable. They're very smart and very clever. They find their way. And somehow the coexistence pieces is what's so important. Is it, it leaves you with a lot of hope with elephants because they are a very important component of the ecosystem. They're the farmers of the forest. They spread the seeds. They help forests recover very quickly. You have a lot of rainfall and a rich environment here. So recovery is is possible in areas where there has been degradation but I think part of it is we need to look at as humans take so much from these forests and grasslands it's not just that we're building on top of them it's also pulling out resources for firewood and and things that often just come down to awareness there are other options you don't necessarily need to strip the forest so so basically you you are saying the sense which I am getting from what you are saying mm -hmm. is that there's a strong linkage between poverty and destruction of forests. That's true and also are, will, are people willing to perhaps have 
denser popul uh, denser villages, denser living areas to make room for wildlife in the protected areas. I know there's history. There are reasons that some of the protected areas were yeah. encroached upon. There are, there are a lot of things that have to do with the history of different groups. And I understand it's hard to reverse history in some ways and give it all back to yeah. nature. And, and, but it and, is something to think about. <laughs> and what, uh, what has been your experience? Because you, uh, not just India and Bhutan, you've mm -hmm. also been working in some of the African countries. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, my question to you, Lisa, is what is the difference how, how do you rate what is the response of the government is it uh, as expected or think or do you think uh, the India? governments have lots to do in India yeah let's well, talk about India I, I really don't work in the the, the realm of trying to change the government. I am a strong believer that grassroots movements, a lot of conservation can happen without the long-term process that you wait for the long term. I think there's a lot of here and now without any changes in laws. There are a lot of protections already in place. Now, enforcement's an issue. However, the people, pressure from the people, if it became very unpopular, for example, for those teenagers yeah. who enjoy teasing the elephants and laughing and thinking this is a cool way to have fun is to aggravate elephants, y then someone gets hurt by that elephant. Mm -hmm. If it was no longer cool for a young person to run at the elephants, throw rocks at them and, and do this, and provoke, then perhaps it would be cooler for them to be seen as perhaps a young male that's seen as a conservationist, someone who's helping yeah. guide their community. Yeah. So yeah. my thought is sometimes it's a matter of giving people some options and some training and some education and knowledge and some leadership ability. So opportunity so to jump in. Basically, you mm -hmm. have to involve the communities. I think so. Uh, I communities hold the key. Yes. Now, another question I'd like to ask you, yeah. uh, you know, uh, basically there are a lot of uh, conservation groups, mm -hmm. whether we call it NGOs and mm -hmm. others mm -hmm. uh, engaged in similar efforts. Yes. But there's hardly any connect. Nobody knows who is, uh, who, you, what is your, your colleagues doing is belonging to some other organization. But luckily, I think uh, the Eastern Himalayan uh, Naturonomics Forum, uh, you know, the third edition uh, which had just ended, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, uh, I mean, there were a lot of efforts basically to bring, unite uh, some of these groups together and the website uh, is being launched mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Is this a good idea? What do you yes. think? Yes. It's a wonderful idea. T it does take a lot of resources to run meetings and a lot of people are put up in hotels. There are a lot of meals to be had. So there's a lot of effort, time, money put into that. However, what I've noticed in participating last year and this year, I'm really watching the interactions, the co the colleagues sharing information, beginning to collaborate and join forces towards bigger efforts with more impact. I think that's the good of these meetings. You can't have them every month. But, 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 uh, but it's a good idea mm -hmm. for different organizations working with the same objective to unite and share their experience. Absolutely. And I know with my, n my latest project, that is exactly where I'll be, is inviting different groups to be partners. I'm not on the ground in India. I live in the U.S. in yeah. Montana. So for me, the visits are expensive, they're few and far between. What I'd like to do is to help facilitate in any way and support. But really where the action is is with all of these groups. I also encourage, to be honest, I really encourage local communities to form their own small local NGOs, form their own leadership teams. Absolutely. And really participate in the process. Don't wait so for an outside group to come. Decentralize the yeah. conservation efforts that holds the key. On that note, we shall go for a short break now, but stay on. When I come back, I shall continue my conversation with conservationist Lisa Mills.